Okay, the second type of operation I'd like to do is uh, be able to do uh, create an artifact. So if I go back to our, our service provider document, sorry for the scrolling again, I'm going to go back up to the top here. So I've got the creation factory here for a defect. So I want to be able to create a new defect um, in my service provider. So I know that the, the URL that I want to go to is the, the creation factory URL. So I'm going to copy that and put that in my REST client here. So there's the, the creation factory. Um, the HTTP verb that we use for creation is a post. Let me get rid of this content. Um, so a post is what we use for creation. Put is generally used for update and get as we saw for query. So the, the, we need an additional header when we're going to do a post. We need to tell the server what sort of content we're passing it. So we're going to add a content type header. And again, it's going to be application RDF plus XML. Plus XML. OK. Now we need some content to actually post. So I'm going to flip over to my Eclipse here. Excuse me. What I have here is some RDF XML of a change request. What I have here is the minimal set of fields that you would really need to create um, a change request in Rational Team Concert. So my change request has a title, has a description, has a type. Then there's two. These are all in the, if you go to the OSLC change management spec, all of those attributes are described there and, you know, as to how they're used in change requests. In addition to the ones from the OSLC spec, RTC Team Concert requires a couple of additional attributes in order for me to successfully create a change request. How do I know that I need to provide these additional attributes? And, you know, the values look pretty non-intuitive to me. Um, how do I know uh, what to do there? And the answer is in the resource shape. So if I look at the creation, sorry, let me tab back to here. If I look at the resource shape for a defect, I'm going to actually go off and get this. The resource shape basically has, you can see a lot of repeated sections here. And this is basically a section for each possible attribute um, in, a, in a defect change request. So it's got a ton of information here. This goes on for, for quite a bit. Um, not, not meant to be processed you know, by humans, except maybe to do a, you know, a quick glance through it to, to figure out if a particular attribute is required or you know, what the range of the values is. So, you know, one of the things that was required there was the, the RTC CM type. And, you know, the value that I, whoops, sorry. The value that I specified here for it, you can see it's a URL that's on my server and ends with defect. How, how did I know what value to, to provide there? And inside the, if I look back in the resource shape, uh, this section right here is talking about that attribute, the type attribute. Um, and one of the attributes here is allowed values. So if I go to this URL right here to find out what the allowed values are for that type attribute, if I do a get on that, You know, tells me what all the different allowed values are. So it could be retrospective, adoption, impediment, epic story, or defect. I mean, that's the one that I'm interested in right now. So in order to be able to to say that I'm interested, I'm doing a defect type. That's the value that I need to provide. So it, it it's quite a bit of drill down. I mean, you're going from the service provider to the creation factory to the resource shape, and you know, even down into actual attributes to find out, you know, what the legal values are. So um, again, it's something that's you know intended to be done programmatically, but that, that's the sort of drill down that you would do in order to be able to successfully discover um, everything that you would need to know about creation um, of a resource. So once you were, um, 
once you were able to successfully you know, provide the required attributes, like I have in this case, title description type, um, DC terms type, RTC type, and filed against, um, I can actually use this content right here to do a post and create a new uh, change request, OSLC change request. So I'm going to jump back over to my REST client here. So I have the um, I have the creation factor URL for defects. I've got post. I've got my content type set. So I'm just going to take that content and paste it into this field. One thing I don't like about advanced REST client is it doesn't let you expand this body field. It kind of gets a little crowded if you have a lot of content. So if I send this request, the response I get back um, has several interesting things. One is, so 201 created tells me that I successfully created something, a new change request. The location header in the response tells me the URL that I can use to access that new change request that I created. And down here, I also have um, the content of the resource that I just created. So you can see the description defect created from HTTP post here. You know, it's all the information I provided plus a whole a whole lot of extra information that RTC, this implementation, this change management implementation has added to the resource that I created. So it has the information I provided plus additional information supplied by the, um, the change management provider. 